this screencast will go through how to get your existing projects into a GitHub repository. So it should go, I guess, without too much saying that you need to go first on github.com and create an account before you do this. This is my profile page on the account. We're going to start from there. So uh, the first thing you want to do is going to create a repository. Now, actually, in this class, I'll suggest you have at least two repositories, one for most of your class work where you do assignments and things like that, and then another one for the project that you'll be making. And that will be uh, the same repository can be used for both the midterm and the final, as they'll be extensions of each other. We'll get to that another time. This one is for the class one. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and create a new repository. Uh, depending on the page that you're on, there's other ways to do it. Um, I'm going to um, call this one MMP240. You could call it something like that. Um, you know, I already have um, some things like that, so I'm going to just call it MMP240 uh, dash uh, just to change it. Um, but you would want to call it something like MMP240. You could also call it classwork or things like that um, as well. Um, the other thing you'll want to make sure to do is initialize the repository with the readme. Um, that is helpful. You won't have the option of private here. Uh, it'll just have to be uh, public for you, so just you'll have the public option. And then click Create Repository down here. Alright, so now you have a repository. This readme, by the way, we'll show you later how you can edit that um, uh, and, and do things with it. This is what people will first see when you're on it. Um, and oh, sorry, I forgot to write a description on it, so you can actually click that. And uh, this is a description of my project. All right, and if you had like a website for this, you could put it there, which we'll talk about later for the midterm final repository. Um, so I'm just going to save that. And then now the next thing is I want to have um, this on my computer too. So remember. The way GitHub works is you have the same repository on GitHub as you do on your computer, and they're both Git. So let's just say here, this is my folder. Um, you know, we're down in here now. Um, okay, and I'm just going to make a new one, a new folder, and I'm going to call it um, you know, MMP, you know, same thing, MMP240 dash, right? You might call it the same thing. You could also, like, it doesn't have to be the same name, so Git repo you know you could add something like that to it as well so now I have that folder and I want to open that folder um, in brackets uh, but before I actually open that folder I want to first make sure that in brackets in my extension manager that I have the brackets git extension installed All right so um, so I have it installed here but if you don't you can go to available look for brackets git and so that's it there I'm going to type it again uh, so it's this brackets git extension that we're looking for right here uh, and you want to install that okay so once you've done that we want to open this folder that we created uh, one quick way if you don't know about it yet is you can just literally drag that folder up here and then it will open that folder that's equivalent to doing um, in brackets file open folder like that okay so now the next one is we need to clone this repo here down so remember cloning is when you go from um, github down to your local one all right that's the clone and when you do it for the first time after that so the first time is clone uh, and then all the ones after that are when you do what's called a pull that's going down and we'll see later going back up as a push. Alright, so I'm going to click this button that says clone or download and then click this little thing that says copy to clipboard. So I'm copying the URL for that repository. Then here in brackets git, I'm going to um, click on this little link here. This is going to open up that window. There's other ways to do it um, too. I, uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, you can go into the Git settings and it will show you um, other ways like keyboard shortcuts you can use to do it. 
Okay, so now that I've clicked this, uh, I'm now going to click on clone, uh, not init. That's if you want to initialize, but we're not going to do that this time. So I'm cloning an existing repository, and then I'm going to paste in that URL that I got, right? So uh, this is what's linking up our URL to here, uh, so that we'll be able to clone it. And then I'm going to need to fill up my GitHub username and password. All right. Now, if you want, you could, if you're on your own computer and you want, you can save your credentials here so you don't have to keep typing in your password. If you don't click that, uh, which I'll show every time, you'll, it'll ask you for your password. So there we go. I'm going to click OK. It's going to run it and it's showing there. And so we should see now that the same readme file that's here is there and then this is the dot git file this is the one that keeps track of all the stuff that you do okay so now let's say this is this is good and now i have my i've already been working on some projects and assignments right so let's say i have these folders here so i have a couple folders that's my assignment two and i have assignment four that i've done there's some other like little experiments and things i'm working on i want those all part of this class so i'm just going to take all those folders and put them into my repository all right now one thing is that um, brackets doesn't always update itself when you're adding folders from the outside like that so there's two ways you can do command r so refresh just like you would your window because brackets is basically built on html and css and javascript you can also go under debug and go to reload uh, like that it's the same thing so reload with extensions. By the way, if you're ever running into some problems, sometimes reloading without extensions will work. So once I reload it, now I should see those files. And what's going to happen is um, these are the new folders I created, and it's going to show all those files in it as untracked, right? Meaning they're not yet part of Git. All right, so there are files in there, and that's right. Now occasionally, um, like in this case, you see this is the dot underscore index.html. Uh, it's just like one of these Mac system files. If you know that it's something like that and you don't want it, you can click on it and delete it, and that will sort of permanently get rid of it. Uh, but these are all those files and all those folders. All right, so you see it's a decent amount. Uh, but part of uh, what I want to do with that is show you how fast this can be, um, also compared to FTP. So you can either check these one by one, all right, and so it goes what's called staged. It just means it's ready to be committed. That's what staged means. Now, or if you know that you want all of it, you can click uh, the little link at the top here, and um, that will select all of them to be committed. Now, you haven't committed yet. Remember, commit is saying, I want to manually say, save this uh, version of my project in the history um, that Git keeps track of. So I'm going to click commit now, and I'm just going to write in here initial. Uh, commit of files um, some previous work. All right. Um, also, depending on what you've done, Git will like do some code inspection and look for validation on it and sort of tell you like, hey, if this isn't you know valid and, and things like that. Um, what the diff is, um, so that was up here. Um, I'm not going to ignore that for now. The diff means the it's going to show you the difference between the existing file and what your the previous commit in this one. Now in this case, since I had a thousand, I don't know, a few hundred files, it's too long. It's just not going to display it. Also, um, you have a little character count here because this is a limited number of characters that you have left. So if you start typing more, you see it'll go up into the orange and you know, you're getting a little bit long there. All right. Uh, if you want, you can click this extended one here. Uh, and if you do that, uh, it gives you um, a longer uh, thing to do. Uh, all right. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to click OK. All right. And now it will tell me nothing to commit. My working directory is clean. So I have, I have no more files that need committing. Uh, and then these are a couple different things. So this is the poll. This is saying come from GitHub down to here. And this is the push. That's saying go from my local one up to GitHub. So that's what I want to do now. I made some changes um, down here. This is my local one, and I want to push those changes up 
to GitHub. So that's where the push comes in. All right, so I'm going to click this button here to push. All right, so I didn't do that, so I have to put my username and password. Oops. And it's going to run and tell me it's done. And then it usually it will say successful. If it's not, there may be some kind of problem you have to work out. Uh, just to sort of warn everyone, occasionally when you, when you first start this out, you'll do something. It won't work. You won't know why. And you'll get very frustrated. It happens. Uh, you can contact me. We can talk about it. You know, it just some some of the life you have to live with when learning to work with Git. So now I say OK if I go back to GitHub and refresh my page. There we go. All those files are there. And actually, it was pretty immediate. Um, if this was FTP and I was uploading all these files through FTP, it would have been a lot, lot longer, I'll tell you that. Uh, and so there we are. And so then as we go along, if I want to keep working on a file, so I go into the file and I want to do something. So like, all right, you know, this is uh, looking OK, but I want to change something somewhere. All right, I'm going to start changing the this around. Uh, don't want that there. It's going to go here. Um, and then I'm going to change you know, this to an unordered list or something like that. All right. Um, and now as I save it here, I just want to let you see what it does. So it sort of shows you here a little color coding to let you see when things have changed uh, and when they're new uh, and so forth. So you can even see down to the line what's changed in your files. Um, what's also happened is that it showed me here that I have a modified file. So this is something I'm already tracking, but I've changed, and I haven't committed those changes yet. And by the way, one of the cool things about Git, um, and and this is a visual interface for Git. There's a command line interface, and there's also the Git uh, desktop apps. Is you can do things like that, right? Like so I can say discard changes, right? So it's like, oh, I didn't want those changes. I click discard. It says, really, do you want to reset it back to where it was? I say, okay, boom, it's back to where it was before. Right, so all that stuff that I've done, even though I click save, it's all back there. Of course, it means I have to go back and you know make these changes again. Um, but you know, there we are. So you know, I can go back and uh, oops, um, there we go, like that. Uh -huh. Right, and so I'm sort of working on that. So um, maybe I want to change all these. Do, 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 do. Um, to uh, list item like that. Oops, I missed a couple. Um, just showing you a quick thing and multiple ones. But anyway, um, so you get the idea. Um, sorry, I'm messing something up here. I'm trying to go talking and go too fast. All right. Anyway, um, so now I've made some more changes to this, and I've also totally messed it up in some way. Um, uh huh. Okay. Um, and by the way, I have a beautify on save, so that's why it kind of redoes it every time. So there we go. So I'm going to make a commit. So now here we go. I can do this. I can write commit and I can say something like um, changed um, candidate list to use uh, at ul. Okay, so there we go. Now also it shows me again here, I have one change that I have not pushed back up. So I can go there and push up those changes and there we go. And that's how I would work. And I, by the way, you don't have to push all the changes every time you make it. You can make a few different commits. Uh, this number will just keep growing and then just make sure you push them up before you're all done. Uh, and if I went now into that assignment two and looked at it, I should see in that um, second place there, there we go. Uh, that was it, I think, um, those changes that I just made.